basketball on so I'm going to be a little closer to you now to be out here. It's been a long time since I've been here. I thought that you didn't love me anymore. <laughs> so I was really, really happy when I received the invitation to come and share with you this morning because I haven't been here. And I hope this morning this message will offer you a clue of what could be happening. And then we have your poor concentration. You're not able to do things as you used to before because you're not able to concentrate. You try to do something, you try to kneel down to pray, and, and your brain is everywhere. Your mind is everywhere. Uh, you, you try to organize yourself, and you cannot. This is what depression is. There are usually a number of types of depression. We we need to look at about eight or nine of them. Let me begin with the, the five here. Uh, here, so number one here that I'm going to present to you is a, is a major depressive disorder. This is what is known as clinical depression. It's prolonged. This is not short. It, it's a long time of sadness that is more than two weeks. You, it, it, it just comes to you out of nowhere. It, by the way, my sister. Our children can also be depressed. And you need to understand for a lot of those when we, we go to another place with the children that we live behind, it's easy for them to get depressed. But this usually takes more than two weeks, and then we have something called persistent depressive disorder, or dysthymia. That this is depression that lasts at least two years. And this is a very long-term depression that we have, bipolar disorder, and I'm here to tell you this morning, stop making jokes about bipolar people that is not funny. Don't use that as a joke, you know what, bipolar disorder, this manic depression, extreme fluctuations in mood and energy affects a lot of people. These are extreme fluctuations in mood and energy. And then we have one that is specific to women. And it's unfortunately that a lot of them in our country, you don't hear more about this, and it's the, the postnatal depression, we'll see that in a second again here. A postpartum depression, the feeling of depressed for several weeks after giving birth. I've seen women in my work, and I've talked to women that said, I don't want to be a mother anymore. I don't know what is happening to me. It's very, very serious. And then we have the premenstrual dysphoric disorder too, that it is it's more for, for, for ladies, it is more severe with this. This is very, very serious. And the other one here, as I mentioned, will repeat some of it, and I want to concentrate on psychotic depression. It's a very serious mood disorder that includes having hallucinations or delusions, and then it requires hospitalization. Not all depressions will take people to the hospital. But when people begin to experience psychotic depression, it becomes a little more serious. This is also sometimes when people begin hearing voices. And now we require the person to be hospitalized. I'm sure that if I were to ask you to raise your hand, some of you may have had a family member that have experienced it. It's actually very common. Okay. Then we have what we call the, the, the sad, the seasonal affective disorder. This is a type of depression related to changes in the season that begins at about the same time, uh, especially in the northern hemisphere where people live where the sun does not shine a lot. People get depressed when they don't see the sun. Here in Hong Kong, that's not a problem. We get depressed because we see the sun too much, you know, when it's really hot, but it is not a problem with that. Okay. So this is a, a very, very serious that affects a lot of people. And then we have something called situational depression. Situational depression or reactive depression is the informal term that refers to the adjustment disorder with the price movement. This is a temporary form of depression that is marked by strong feelings of angst in response to a major disruption of trauma. Would you not agree with me that a lot of you, when you came from the Philippines, when he came from Indonesia to Hong Kong, that was a bit of depression. Do not agree with me. Families, situational, you changed. You left your family. You left all that you knew. In your situational depression. However, once a person becomes more accustomed with a new reality, the present symptoms gradually 
subside. Typically, someone experiencing situational depression is able to bounce back, typically. But there have been domestic helpers in Hong Kong that have not been able to bounce back, and they need to go back to their homes because they cannot take it. And that is also okay. So these are some of the signs and symptoms of depression. By the way, do not self-diagnose. Do not self-diagnose. This is something that a medical professional needs to tell you. But these are some symptoms that you can look for. Uh, difficulties concentrating, uh, physical aches and pain, Depression will eventually show up in how you feel physically, aches and pain, uh, finding no pleasure in life or things that you usually enjoy, feeling guilty, changes in appetite or weight, restless, agitated or, or irritated easily, loss of interest, lack of energy, emptiness, low sexual drive, no motivation, despair, difficult speaking clearly, avoiding social events, Feeling tired all the time, feeling worthless, low self-esteem, feeling tearful, because sometimes you cry for no reason. Uh, indecisiveness, you can't decide things, low mood, feeling hopeless, no self-confidence, feeling numb. And then as we mentioned before, insomnia or hypersomnia when you sleep a lot, especially for women. Uh, we, we have this in depression, uh, my sisters. It's a real medical condition. This is very real. Depression can hurt literally. You can feel it. It hurts. All that tired, it's all that hopeless, and it reflects it in your physical and hurt. Certain types of depressions are unique to women. Depression, my sisters, can be treated. This is a treatable condition. And we are now looking into research that are more make more emphasis on women's health because unfortunately women tend to be more or get more depression than men. Women tend to be more uh, yeah. so this is something interesting here that a lot of you may have experienced this. And this is high function depression. Take a look at this please. What you see is that you are working, you know, you do your work, but then you need a distraction. Uh, you're praised for accomplishments, but you feel like you're fake. Uh, it's like you have it all, but you feel empty. Uh, appear motivated and passionate, but you're not sure that, that, that you love anymore. And even, even in a city like Hong Kong, with seven plus million people, with all the people around, you feel so empty and alone. This is what we call high functioning depression. If you look at the statistics in the United States, I couldn't get the ones from Hong Kong here, but in the United States, the World Health Organization in 2017 says that 300 million people worldwide experience depression. In the United States, 3.1 million people between the ages of 12 and 17 in the U.S. have experienced at least one major depressive episode in a year. And then we have your suicide. Um, here in Hong Kong this week, we have three families that are hurt. Did you hear? Okay. On uh, today's Saturday, I believe it was on Wednesday, you hear about the, the, the young couple in uh, Kennedy Town? Okay. And did you, uh, the, the, there was a young couple young couple, but they were not very old, in Kennedy Town, uh, they decided to commit suicide together. So both of them jumped at the same time. Uh, one of them landed on a taxi, and the other one landed on a bus full of children. Those children, unfortunately, will be traumatized for life if they don't receive help. And uh, on Thursday, there was a young girl, I don't know if it was Thai Pool or Thai Wai, five percent of adults received no, no. Nearly 50% of those diagnosed with depression also have an anxiety disorder. If you take a look at the figures there, 8.7% of women have depression compared to 5.3% of men. So women have a much higher chance of getting depressed than men do. So 
this is something I want you to take home with you this morning, okay? Because we really do uh, harm people. And I want you to learn here, things not to say to someone who may be experiencing depression, okay? So please, uh, take a look at this. If you want to take a picture, take a picture, because this is something that I really want you uh, to learn. What not to say to someone that is afraid? Number one here, we're struggling. It's not just you. If I'm hurting, don't come and tell me I'm hurting. You know, everyone hurts. You know, it's, it's my feelings. So be careful with that. Okay. Okay. People that say, oh, we all have that face too. That's a horrible way to tell someone uh, depression. And, and the, the third one here, uh, one of the worst ones, is all in your head. That is such a wrong thing to say to someone that has a friend. It's not in their head. This is a serious condition. Let me ask you a question, sister. If someone had cancer, and they came to you and told you they had cancer, would you tell them it's all in your head? But we do that with people that are depressed. And we shouldn't do that. Uh, either you don't seem sad, so you must, not, you must not be depressed, or you need to try harder, or you'll get over it. You don't look depressed. Once again, it's all in your head. Or the, the, the famous one that a lot of people like to use, this too shall pass. Okay. A lot of people have it worse, think positive. Try not to be depressed. How would you tell someone who's depressed? Try not to be depressed. Don't be dramatic. Uh, tired of being depressed. Your attitude, do not tell people that. So what do you say to someone who's depressed? Now you, you so what you don't say, so what do you say to someone who's depressed? You know, simple. I can't imagine how you feel, but I'm here for you if you need me. I wish I had the right words to say, but just know that I care about you. Give a silent hug or embrace if it's appropriate. But you can say, I'm sorry. I know that's important to you. Do you want to talk about it? Is there something you need from me? I know these are difficult right now, but I have confidence in you. These are things that can really help out in you helping someone. So now, my sisters, what does the Bible say about depression? Very clearly. Because sometimes we, we tend to not understand it. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure suicidal thoughts. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure the pressure Christ. I want you to take these verses with you. The Bible said, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored to the world. In Psalm 92, 12. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my what? Refuge. My place. My safety. He is my God. 